Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at our logarithmic regression rainbow. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So for those that are new, I know a lot of you guys are already fully aware of what this indicator is, so I just wanna do a brief update on it. But for those that are new, the, the general idea is that we have these long accumulation windows uh, in the after the bear market okay they're, they're generally after the bear market where there's a there's a little bit of excitement in the air uh, because we're no longer just bleeding every single day uh, but it's not quite yet the mania phase of the bull market and we had this last cycle and we had it this cycle too however in the current cycle there was a lot more, and as we've said it before, there was a lot more intra-cycle volatility, okay? A lot more intra-cycle volatility because not only did we come up to this band during the accumulation phase, we also came down to this one, okay? And then now we've come up to this one. And this is the same one we also were, we also held resistance at back in April of 2018 at around $10,000. Today though, it's at 60 something thousand dollars, which again is another reason why I say, hey, time is on our side. We're generally trending up with time. Yes, there's gonna be mania phases. Yes, there's gonna be cool down phases. Yes, the price of Bitcoin goes up. Yes, it goes down, but it generally goes up. So we also can go back even further and look at prior accumulation phases that were one regression band down. Okay, so we're just gonna go look at that really quick and say, all right, well, we, ha we had another accumulation phase in that cycle, and then we were in that same regression band for the following cycle for our accumulation phase following the bear market. And then the other thing that we've noted is that we say, hey, each time, each cycle, we're unable to go back to the prior regression band. For instance, this one was in the red one, and then we came down too. And then this one was in the purple one, and then we came down, okay? And then this one was here. And then what I've been saying is that, not that we can't go above it, okay? We definitely could, but I don't see us, I don't see us getting back to this regression band, okay? And this one's gonna continue to run away from us, in my opinion, and we'll never quite reach it. Um, just like just like the red band, we never reached the red band for the following cycle, and then this purple band, we never reached it for this cycle. In the same way, I do not think we will reach this yellowish band in this current cycle. And that band, that logarithmic regression band, this one that I'm showing right here, currently ranges from $111,000, 833, so $111,838, up to 192690 So, and it's moving away from us, okay? So what I've said before is I don't think that we can make it to that regression band this cycle period if history is any indication in that we generally drop down a couple of regression bands. And not only do we not make it to the one we hit, we usually also don't go to the one below it either. For instance, the next cycle, we never made it to this this one up here, right? Or the uh, other one. And then the following cycle, we didn't. We, we not only never made it to the purple one, we also never made it to the orange one, okay? Um, so that's something to consider. And so that I'm saying this cycle, we're probably not gonna make it to this one and we might not make it to the gray one, okay? I don't wanna say we're not going to because we know anything's possible, but there's a decent chance we don't make it to the gray one. And so in the same way that there's been more intracycle volatility during the accumulation phase, my contention is that, hey, we still have more intracycle volatility today. Now, that doesn't mean we can't continue to trend up and maybe go into the gray band, but what it could mean is that even if we were to come down for a while, right, even in the event where we come down for a while, and then if we decide to go back up, by that time, this band will be even higher. And by the time we come back up to it, it could be over 100K. Because remember, the regression bands are monotonically increasing. They, they move up every single day. And so this is just one more thing I, I wanted to point out with the idea of this cycle is having a little bit more interest cycle volatility than the last one, right? So during the accumulation phase, instead of just staying right in our accumulation band, we came up to this one with a capitulation back down to this one. Okay, so currently we're up here. You know, the, the upper, the, this regression band starts at around 60, uh, 64,911. So it's, it's, getting, it's getting pretty far up there at this point. 
And then the, the bottom part of this band is all the way down at, at 37,675. So if we were to come back down to the bottom of the band, which is where we were back in the summer of 2019, so if we did come back down to that band, um, then we should note that today that that actually be a fairly significant drop. I'm certainly not saying we're going to go there, but it would be 37,675, which is actually above where the 20 week moving average is right now. Um, but again, you know, as we, we've drawn comparisons before to this cycle and two cycles ago, and if it does emulate it, right, and if we do have sort of like a double peak cycle or something ridiculous like that, just like this cycle did, then we might actually have some weekly closes below the bull market support band if we emulate, if we continue to emulate, emulate that one. Regardless, you know, there, there's no guarantee that we're, we're decisively going to head down. I mean, we've been flirting with this upper band for, for a couple months now. Obviously, right now, everyone's a little bit bearish because, you know, we had a red candle last week. We're, we're already moving down this week. And, and the general sentiment does seem to be a bit bearish right now. But I, I, I would, again, I would encourage people to, to always just take a step back and, and to remember that corrections with Bitcoin, it's not a matter, again, it's not a matter of if they'll happen, it's just simply a matter of when. And those that capitalize on significant corrections, right, those that capitalize on them tend to, tend to um, be the ones that benefit the most later on, okay? So again, if we emulate 2013, it's possible we have a downtime for a while before continuing up not necessarily meaning we have to wait, you know, four or five years before we get another bull market, right? If we just go down for a few months, like we did in 2013, like we just, we know that's a possibility. Another thing to consider is that there are, you know, there are some similarities so far between this move here and what happened at the 2019 peak, okay? So if you look at the prior peaks, all of them were these like major blow off tops, right? And, and once you got to that blow off top, you didn't really spend a whole lot of time just moving sideways at those levels, okay? So you see these major blow off tops, one, two, three, and then we had this blow off top as well. What do you notice about all four of these? None of them, none of them were had, you know, none of them were um, um, also described as having two or three months of sideways movement. After they hit the top, it was just more or less straight down, okay? It was more or less straight down. So far, in, in this market cycle, as measured from market cycle bottom, okay, if you measure it from market cycle bottom over here, we had this major move up. And then, instead of just having a major blow off top, we, we just sort of, we, we went sideways for a while, and then we started bleeding for a while, okay? And, and when we bled, we bled over the course of, from from say let's let's take it from the end of our sideways movement here to when we started turning down we bled for a, a little over half a year okay so that was more indicative of you know a, a a bunny hill in the bull market rather than a market cycle top and a pretty significant bunny hill at that so again whenever and i'm not saying it's going to happen now but whenever it does happen if this is the case if it is now if we do go into a cool down phase, and I, I mean, I've been saying for five months now or four months now that, that you know, that, that Bitcoin is obviously uh, very heated and momentum is likely to carry us up each and every week. It's more likely to go up and up than down. At some point, we'll have a momentum shift that'll take us back down. So when we look at this and we say, all right, well, if we do enter, if we enter, bearish territory where we're heading down for a few months is that the worst thing in the world i don't think so and i and i don't think that it necessarily even means that it's the end of the bull market in 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 terms of the entire market cycle it might just be something similar to this where we go down for a few months but it doesn't necessarily mean we have to wait you know it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have um, one over a year of, of capitulation followed by, you know, a, a couple year or a year or two of accumulation again. It could be one of these shorter things where we just sort of come down for a little bit and then and then ultimately turn back up. This would be, say, like the bearish scenario if we're unable to decisively move into the to the next band and if we do start testing some some lower values so we just want to show this chart again to show that it is difficult getting into the regression band from the prior cycle it is difficult 
doesn't mean it can't happen. And the gray band certainly seems like it could be in the cards. I mean, we're, we're almost at it. The one up here, this yellow one, I, I sincerely doubt is in the cards just because of, of what we've seen from, from prior moves. But again, these are moving up each and every week. So as I always say, time is on our side. And those that stick with Bitcoin for the long haul generally be the generally are the, the, the primary winners in the market. So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, make sure you check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. If you pay with crypto for six or 12 months, you actually can get like a 15% discount. Make sure you guys check it out. You get access to weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, the Into the Cryptoverse app and more. We also have t-shirts now and a coffee mug. So if you guys are interested in Into the Cryptoverse merch, you can find that in the description below as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Let's go for 100 or let's go for 300 um, and, and 20,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.